welcome back farm friends we are having another butchering day today this is our final butchering day for the first round of meat birds that Jose and I have done here on the farm we ordered 25 Cornish Cross and 25 Red Rangers the Cornish Cross were ready at eight weeks so we butchered them just around nine weeks just based on our schedule and then the Red Rangers here that we're doing today those grow out to 12 weeks and we're processing a little bit older we processed six of them the other day with some of our friends from Ashry Homestead Tony and Dana they came and helped they came to visit and we were like hey would you guys want to see how we process what our setup is and they were totally game so we processed six chickens that day just to get their feet wet and to start um, and help us out because doing 25 in one day is a lot for sure. Um, so that was really wonderful. We give so many thanks to them for helping us. It was a lot of fun. Definitely enjoyable doing it as a community, right? I had fun, yeah. And they were, they're a great couple. We had a lot of fun with them. Yes, they're wonderful people. We look forward to spending time with them again. And on that note, if you are a homesteader or a farmer or someone in middle, central, or middle, Middle East, Tennessee. West Tennessee. We're right in Middle Tennessee. If you're interested in homesteading, interesting in farming, or if you're already doing it and you just want to hang out with others, please let us know. We we would what is that? This is oh, it's a bee. <laughs> we would love to meet other couples and other people that are interested in doing what we're doing or people who have been doing it for a while that just want to meet up whatever level and whatever place you're at we would love to to meet you we would love to make some more friends and grow this community and i know dana and tony would as well from ashry homestead um so yeah just reach out and let us know let's build this community in tennessee i know people that are on this journey it's not rare i know there's others like us yeah. out there so like you know the more like-minded people um that we that we get to know i think the better for every everyone and mm -hmm. the community itself so yeah yep. reach out to us i think it'd be a lot of fun just to, to see what each one of us is doing and how we can help each other out yeah absolutely so we are doing the red rangers today i'm going to show you the setup because we did the setup a little bit differently this time it worked out amazingly well um we will never process that by the house again that time with the cornish we just had to make it happen and work with what we had but jose ran the electrical and got the electrical hooked up to our shed here. So we're able now to process out here because we needed electrical. He also built this amazing, are you turning lights on, hun? I did. Let's go take a look it's at- easier to see in here. Like, look at that. So we have electrical, we have power out here. Jose got that done for us, which was amazing. Oh, that's awesome. It's so excited. Yes. <laughs> he also built this last week. This is our new kill station. Um, he's got that set up here. We've got flypaper, which butchering and processing out here in the field really, really cut down on flies. One other thing I did today because I did come out here, we got this set up and then we ran to get ice and there were some flies just hanging out, right? So I had the idea of getting some of our sage um, and other like smudge sticks and put them in this bowl, just, you know, nothing super special from the kitchen and got those going and immediately the flies were gone. So this is a really great idea. Super happy with that. We've got everything cleaned off here. We've got our fish cleaning station that we use for processing. We have our table that we used last time, but if you notice, we now have leg extensions. Jose cut some PVC and it brings the table. Let's see if I can get myself here. It brings the table up to like waist height, which is awesome. I have no back and neck strain now butchering on this table. Last time it was so much better. It's even higher than the fish cleaning station now, which is great. Over here, we've got... Do you have the thermometer? Yes, it's in here. Over here, we've got bowls. These are for livers, hearts, livers, hearts, gizzards, feet, and necks. So we have water out to the field. 
which allows this process to be much easier. We have a hose hook up here. So we've got that situated. We've got two lines, one going over here that we will hook up to the yard bird. So we've got our yard bird. We've got the turkey fryer that's hooked up. That's what we use to scald. And so speaking of community, things like this, like the yard bird, I was telling Tony and Dana, they would like to be able to do meat birds, but they don't have the setup yet for it. And so I was like, well, you could always either, you know, borrow or rent our equipment, or we could grow out chickens for you. And you guys can come over and help with processing and then get your chickens. So those are things that you can do. You don't have to do everything yourself on your homestead or farm. You can barter, you can share, you, I mean, there's so many different things. We don't have bees. Say, you know, they've been into bees before. They don't have bees yet on their new homestead, but if they get into bees, maybe they can share honey with us and we can grow out chickens for them. So different things like that. They want to get into sheep. If they get into sheep, they could raise some sheep for us. And again, we could grow out chickens or pigs, something that they're not doing. So you don't have to do everything. I think now more than ever, it's super important to build that community and be comfortable bartering and trading goods and services versus trying to do everything yourself, which is just impossible. So what are we waiting for, hon? We're waiting for the uh, water to come at the temperature so that we can start dispatching chicken and scalding and some mm -hmm. defeather and then start there. So much like the first processing video, we'll show you guys as much as possible. These Rud Rangers are so different than the Cornish. I felt like they were more challenging to process when we did them with Tony and Dana. And that's just because they're a leaner bird the we did just the roosters too so it'll be interesting to see today what it's like to do the to process the hens the roosters legs were very long so they kind of got in the way um so that was a little challenging so i'm interested to see how the hens are and if it's still different than processing the cornish also the way that their fat is laid out was very different um these rud rangers have leaner muscle and leaner like skin fat whereas they have but they had a thick inner layer of fat like on the inside of their body cavity it was wild so we'll show you what we can we're not going to show anything graphic i don't think the dis i think the dispatching is the graphic part we do show some of the butchering um so just forewarned but once their feathers are off they look like a store chicken so i don't know if you don't want to watch don't watch i would leave now <laughs> Dahlia thinks you're cooking her a snack. <laughs> I don't know she is. You say you stry at the base? Get under there. Get under there? That's why they recommend you like, see that? Ah, uh, the, the dunker method. Multiple dunk. Alright guys, so here we have the gizzard. You can see all that nice red meat. It almost looks like a tuna steak. So we keep the gizzards. We keep 
these beautiful livers. We keep the heart and we keep the feet in the neck. So the last thing I need to do is cut the neck off as far down as I possibly can. And there we have it. I already got all the lungs out, so now I'm gonna rinse this, pop it in the cooler, get it cooling down, and we'll move on to the next one. All right, we're halfway done here. Big difference um, between the Red Rangers and the Cornish Cross that we're finding out is definitely size. You got a lot of small birds. Um, and they also have longer limbs, longer legs, longer necks. And the plucker has a hard time not tearing them up. Actually, today has been great. Yesterday with the roosters, they were having a hard time. They were getting torn up in the plucker because of those large limbs and then just being large. But they also have a lot more feathers in the Cornish cross. So with that said, there's a lot of buildup of feathers in the plucker. So every like third or fourth bird, I have to go in here and actually manually take feathers out and clean out because the washout is not, it's not as great with all these feathers in there. But things are looking good. We're, uh, we've noticed a, a big time improvement. Nicole here has been super fast with processing these birds uh the obliteration process right evisceration 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 <laughs> hopefully i'm not obliterating them <laughs> obliterate them no the evisceration process is going fairly well she's doing an awesome job um you know the the dispatching of the birds is a little a little faster um it's not always easy on you you know just because you're some big macho dude it doesn't mean that taking life is easy and i don't take it very lightly um so with me it, it takes me a little bit of time nicole's keeping up with me actually everything's flowing pretty smooth i'm not holding her up she's not holding me up things are looking great and uh we're looking forward to tasting the, the difference between the birds but just from um just from the experience today with seeing the size of the birds i think we're leaning towards the Cornish Cross being our next badge of birds that we do. Just seems like you get more money, uh, more bang for your buck there as far as the weight and meat. So, but we'll, we'll go over that once we get these birds weighed out and uh, some of the mass. And obviously a taste test is going to have to take place for us to make, make that call. But just from, just from the weight of the meat alone, I think uh, we're leaning towards Cornish Cross next, next month. So I'm taking a slight break here while Jose's finishing up that one. Um, and my last one is already in the cooler, so I'm caught up here. But a couple things I wanted to note, a couple conveniences, I would say, that are making this a more enjoyable day is definitely music. We've been playing music. Um, I shut it off so that we don't have any copyright issues with YouTube having music and then we've both jose and i both have really enjoyed having the sage out here it gives a really pleasant smell it's helping to keep the bugs away <laughs> but i already broke the bowl that i originally had the sage in and then i went inside and got our ashtray and that shattered as well <laughs> so i need to get something um that can withstand the heat that we can burn this sage in because that's been really really enjoyable i've really it's liked that cool. yeah they have actually like when you when you do sage burning, they have like abalone shells or abalone shells, um, and that's what you burn it in. So I don't know, we'll get something for next time, but that's been really enjoyable. And I just kind of wanted to touch on that. It doesn't have to be this like bare bones, like off the grid experience. You can have some luxuries, you know? We're under a nice canopy here. We've got music going on. We've got water out here trying to make it as comfortable for ourselves as possible. And it's definitely been really nice. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Back to butchering birds. All right, friends. So it took us, I would say, about four and a half to five hours to process and clean up after ourselves all 19 of the remaining Red Rangers. We did six the other day with our friends and we did 19 on our own today. Um, so I don't think that's bad. Four and a half to five hours. No, that's not bad. 
Um, I definitely felt a lot more confident this time. I figured like my, my process out um, a lot more and I feel like I was a lot faster this time, which was really nice. So we went inside, cooled off for a bit, actually took showers and cleaned ourselves up. And then we're back out here. The whole setup is totally clean again. We cleaned before we went in the house. And now we're going to rent all the chickens off, just clean them off, quality control them. And then we're gonna dry them, bag them, weigh them, and get them in the freezer.